Compared to earlier times, the pathways through school today are many and varied. Many possibilities are available, offering opportunities for everyone. To make use of these opportunities, it is important to have the overview. First of all, we need an overview of where your child stands today and what will happen in the next few years. At the age of four or five, children went to kindergarten for the first time. For two years, they learnt by playing. They began to feel comfortable in the school environment. How pleased the children were when they finally also became pupils. Starting school is at the same time the entry to primary school. Primary school consists of all the grades from the first to the sixth. Beside the normal classes, the so-called regular classes for most children, there are also a few special classes for children requiring particular attention. Almost all children attend regular classes, even if they don't keep up or cannot calculate so well. When that is the case, there is someone on hand to help them to cope. The first three years pass quickly. In the third grade, some things change. The assessment is made with marks and the first foreign language is added. Then fourth grade arrives. One year later, in the fifth grade, the observation phase begins for the transition into the upper grades. Throughout the whole of fifth grade and during the first half year of the sixth grade, the children are specifically observed so that afterwards they can be divided into real and secondary levels. The decision over who attends which subject at which level is taken at the end of the first half year in the sixth grade. For the three main subjects, German, French and Mathematics, the level of teaching which is best for each child is decided individually. Real school level proceeds somewhat slower than secondary school level. According to their subject levels, the children are divided into two groups. Children who attend at least two of the three main subjects at secondary level are called secondary school children. Children who attend two or three of the three main subjects at real level are called real school children. With the change to 7th grade, the children enter secondary school level 1. This has nothing to do with the former secondary school. Now, secondary school level 1 is simply the second half of public school, that means from 7th to 9th grade. In Bern, there are different methods of teaching the various levels of secondary school level 1. In the majority of schools, classes are separated. That means that one class will contain all the secondary school children and the other all the real school children. In both classes, there are children who attend lessons in a particular subject on another level. So, for example, children in the real school class who are taking mathematics at secondary school level or secondary school children taking French at real school level. So that this works, both classes always have their German, French and mathematics classes at the same time. And should a pupil by accident be in the wrong classroom, he or she can just cross over the corridor to attend the class on the right level. The division into the different class levels is not final, neither for one nor the other. 
From the seventh grade, there is a half-yearly assessment report with marks. If it becomes noticeable here that the child is not fulfilling expectations, then it must change to the other class. The reverse is also possible. Those who get particularly good marks in the Real class can change to the secondary class at the end of the seventh school year. In eighth grade, career choice begins. Children who already know that they would like to attend the gymnasium can try to start ninth grade at the gymnasium. The teachers decide whether the transition to the gymnasium, in their opinion, makes sense. If they say yes, the pupil is recommended to make the transition without a test. All other pupils can take an entry test. In the final school year, it is also about the choice of a suitable career and the appropriate training for this career. Today, every child can receive a basic professional training. If the school results at the end of the ninth grade do not suffice for a particular training, it is possible to make the entry by means of a so-called bridging offer. After basic professional training, the possibility exists today for changing to further professional training in all careers. Over the past 20 years, with this flexibility and the later change in level, the expectations of all those pupils could be fulfilled who were not particularly successful in the public school years, but who possessed much more potential. Today, professional futures are no longer decided at the transition to secondary school level 1 and with the division into real and secondary pupils. In the city of Bern, the pupils are integrated as much as possible. That means there are very few special classes, neither for high achievers nor foreign language speakers. With various measures, the pupils are brought up to standard so that they can attend regular classes in the school as quickly as possible. First of all, pupils who are new to Bern and who cannot speak German attend an intensive course. The objective is to integrate them as well and as fast as possible. The children attend the intensive German course for 10 weeks until they have a good chance of following normal lessons. So that they are not left floundering in the class or that other children have to wait for them, these pupils attend language classes for another six months alongside school. At last, summer holidays. At the end of the school year, the children receive marks in the assessment report. With marks, subject ability is assessed. For each subject, there is a mark. This mark contains all the assessments made in the subject, not only the learning tests. The mark in the assessment report does not correspond to the average of all the marks from the learning tests. The mark is a combination of different observations put together. This is also called the assessment mosaic. In each subject there are other factors which have to be considered and integrated into the assessment. For instance, in the subject Nature, Man, Environment, it is assessed also how the pupil works independently. In Natural Science, that is actually as important as learning all the body parts of the bee by heart. Besides all these criteria, which can be different in each subject, 
There are some which in all subjects will always be considered in every case. The individual progress of the child is a part of this, but also how much it studies and what the quality is. It is no longer sufficient to prepare well just for the learning tests in order to get a good mark. The teachers have to consider the overall achievement of the child during the entire time at school as part of the assessment. On the second page of the assessment report, the teacher evaluates the working and studying attitude of the child. This evaluation is more important today than previously. The assessment should not only state whether a child can calculate well, read and write, but also how it fits in, concentrates and how independently it can work. For the transition from primary school to secondary school level 1, these assessments are also important. There are two assessments per year. The parents' discussion takes place at the end of the first half year and the assessment based on marks at the end of the school year. In the sixth grade, at the end of the first half year, the transition comes with the transition report, transition protocol and transition discussion. Then again, at the end of the school year, the assessment report with marks. From the seventh grade, there is an assessment report with marks every half year. The parents' discussion no longer takes place at a fixed point in time. But why are these assessments necessary? Do they actually contribute anything? Or is it just a torment the teachers have thought out for the children? Let's compare the assessment in the school with the levels and tests of a computer game. The objective with computer games is exactly the same as at school. The players, or precisely the pupils, should always improve and always be able to master more difficult levels. That is why the new tests are always a little harder than the level before. In this way, you advance continually with the game and at the end are much better than at the start and you haven't really noticed how progress was made step by step. Assessment tests should always help us to improve. Therefore, they should be just hard enough for us to get through if we exert ourselves. The goals to be achieved are clearly defined in the game. That means you don't practice and learn just anything, but you know from the outset what the aim of the learning is. At school, this is called a learning goal. And in both places, you can also achieve bonus goals. At school, this is called the extended learning goal. Whoever gets these is given more than a five. Assessments should be focused on the learning goal and in principle only established whether we have learned what we set out to learn. The assessment should allow the players to assess themselves. Are you among the best or not quite the last? This way you can see for yourself how much more training you need. Sixty-seven. We train also in school, and there we even have a personal trainer, so that this trainer, also called teacher, can plan the right training. He needs to know, of course, how well we have done up to now, and on what he should work with us more. Assessments in school are therefore also a control for the teachers. As the trainer, has he brought his players up to the level they should be? Learning tests give him indications of who needs more training and what the training needs to be. Assessments and tests must be understandable. 
When repeating or summarizing, the mistakes must be understood. This applies not just to the players, but for you as parents. It should be clear that you are informed about all the assessments of your children and you understand them. Therefore, the assessments must be made in such a way that this is possible. If this is not the case, then you must keep asking until you do understand the assessment. The teacher is obliged to construct the assessment so that you can understand the progress and development of your child. And this not simply from the report, but after each level or even each learning test. Returning to our question at the beginning, why are the assessments actually necessary? After what we have just seen, it can be said that the assessments are an important element in the learning process. For the assessments in school to function, five conditions must be fulfilled. They should be encouraging so that progress is made. Based on the learning goals, so that it is known what is going to be assessed self-critical, so that it is possible to estimate yourself. Orientated to the future, so that tests serve as a basis for improving the learning program. And so that parents can follow precisely the learning steps taking place. Learning tests cannot just ask random questions. Learning tests have to check whether the learning goals are being achieved. But where do these learning goals actually come from? A learning goal describes what the pupil should achieve. This can be something quite simple, such as tying your own shoelaces. Or it can be something quite difficult, for example, learning all the capital cities of all the countries in the world. The learning goals are determined by the teachers. But also the teacher cannot just invent random learning goals. She also has to keep to the rules. So that all children learn the same in all schools, there is a curriculum. The curriculum is compiled for all subjects and contains what the children must learn. In the 5th and 6th grades, for instance, there should be in German, collection and evaluation of ideas and thoughts. That is of course very general and can mean many things. The teacher decides how she wants to reach the goals of the curriculum. Accordingly, she then chooses suitable learning goals which the children should then fulfill. Your child brings these learning goals home. You should read the learning goals so as to find out exactly what your child is learning at school. If you do not understand the learning goals or your child maintains it does not know what they are, then you must speak to the teachers immediately. It can be said that schools today understand much better what a child can do and what it can't. In the past, children fell through the net because it was noticed too late that they had misunderstood something basic. In the few tests, they were either lucky, could learn by heart, or they cribbed. Today, the different methods of assessment avoid this and self-assessment is an important element in this. At least once a year the children make a self-assessment. They practice judging themselves against the defined learning goal. This can be a single conversation or a weekly routine. Sometimes it helps to have a questionnaire so that nothing is forgotten. When these self-assessments are made is determined by the teacher.
Regular physical activity is a prerequisite for the health and performing ability of your child. Precisely when school becomes more demanding and the children must be more intellectually active, physical activity must on no account be neglected. One hour every day. This is the minimum a child needs to remain healthy at school. School sports and letting off steam with school friends is exactly what is needed. In Bern there are also many sport clubs, which offer courses for children in all types of sports. Better still is when movement is integrated into the lessons at school. A short pause with juggling clears the head for arithmetic and writing. Just as every child is in a position to play sport, so every child can play an instrument. The city of Bern supports everyone who wants to make music, and the music school at the Conservatorium Bern is open to everyone, not just talented concert pianists. The Conservatorium is a music school with a long tradition. For a while it was a training ground for talented people. Today it is a music school for everyone. Heute ist es eine Musikschule für alle. Wir haben auch Talentförderung. Wir widmen uns auch Begabungen, aber es ist offen für alle und es kommen auch Gott sei Dank. We are pleased to be an open house. Many styles have their place here with us. Jazz, pop and rock belong today just as much as the classics. The conservatorium has changed during the past 150 years. We teach more than 50 different instruments at widely differing levels. Twice a year we have an open day. There all the instruments are presented. The children can play them and see for themselves whether they would enjoy it. Afterwards there is advice so that each child can learn the instrument that it chooses. For us that is very important. The best is if parents sing with their children. That is the basis for music making and a good preparation. Es ist auch eine wunderbare Vorbereitung für jeden Instrumentalunterricht. Später ist die Begleitung sehr einfach. Es genügt wirklich, sich auf das Sofa zu setzen. Later, when practicing, it is enough if you simply sit down and listen for 20 minutes. That is motivating. Und schon fühlt sich das Kind beachtet und ist entsprechend mit Liebe dabei.
Die Zusammenarbeit mit den Schulen ist sehr gut. Wir haben die Zusammenarbeit intensiviert auch in den letzten Jahren. Collaboration Jahr. with the schools is very good. For some time there has been the Yeki Foundation, with its goal that every child can learn an instrument. At the schools there are many singing classes and the possibility to have music lessons in small groups. These offers will increase in the coming years. In den Primarschulen betreiben und es gibt auch an ausgewählten Schulen, vor allem auch im Berner Westen, das Angebot mit instrumentalem Kleingruppenunterricht in den Schulen ähm, zu starten. Und das wird in den nächsten Jahren zunehmen, äh, dieses Angebot. Wir wollen damit gerade auch Kinder erreichen aus Familien, die bisher das Konservatorium nicht besucht haben. Holiday Island. This is the City of Bern's program to look after school children during the holidays. The children can come here for a whole week or just single days. Holiday Island exists during the spring, summer and autumn holidays. Also in the sport week there is something on offer. Depending on the weather and the season, different activities are organized. Handcrafts, playing, eating, or simply just hanging around. The Holiday Island is for children up to 12 years old, every day from 8 a.m. till 17.30. The older the child becomes, the greater the importance of homework for success at school. Those who do no homework or do it badly will have little success at school. Best work regularly and carefully, then homework is not so bad. Unfortunately, not all children can do this. That is why homework is one of the matters which repeatedly causes argument between parents and children. The situation is not easy. It is one of your responsibilities as parents to make sure that homework is done. At the same time, you should not allow yourselves to get involved, a difficult task which must be mastered. Make sure your child does homework regularly and with concentration. A quiet room without disturbing noises and a working space is required. It's best if you decide with your child when homework should be done. Do not discuss this daily, but find a solution like a timetable. Here not only the school classes can be noted, but also the times when homework is done. In the middle school there is not only homework which must be done for the next day. Sometimes there is a whole week to complete a task. As parents, you should help at the beginning to plan the task, so that not everything has to be done the night before it is due to be handed in. The teachers take the trouble to give tasks which interest the child and challenge it. The best tasks are those in which something difficult has to be solved and it is not certain if it will be solved successfully. Shorter, demanding tasks are good. Long, repetitive exercises do not make sense. If you have questions about the homework, then ask the teacher at once. Do not wait until a parent's evening or the next parent's discussion. On no account should you complain about the homework or the school to your child. This helps nobody at all. Yeah. 
remain available in case your child does not understand something or has a question, but do not get involved. The homework must be done by the child on its own. If you start helping with homework and sitting down to it, then it will be quickly very difficult. Your job is to make sure that the homework is done carefully. Usually, it is enough if you check up on what needs to be done and take a look from time to time to see how it is going. Only help if your child explicitly asks you to, and then don't just solve the problem yourself. If you join in, your child learns less and not so well. Support your child. Show it that the school is interested in its success and hence in its homework. If homework becomes a problem, then you must speak to the teacher. On your own, you can't solve the problem and teachers are professionally trained in this. Even if everything seems to be too much and nothing seems to work, or if you are working and often do not have the time to accompany the homework, you should discuss this as quickly as possible with the teacher. Perhaps you will decide together for some homework assistance. Here, children can finish their homework in small groups under supervision once or twice a week. The supervisors behave here as though they were parents. They check that the homework is done with concentration, explain as little as possible, and certainly do not solve the problems themselves. The supervision is in no way teaching backup. Homework assistance is not provided by the school, but comes from the non-profit organization of the city of Bern. The transition from the primary school to secondary school level one comes slowly closer. We should take a look into the future. The transition procedure from the primary into the secondary school level one takes place from the sixth into the seventh grade. Up to now, all children attended the same class together, from the best to the weakest. Now, they will be divided into different classes according to their strengths. This separation makes sense because the children can then be challenged according to their abilities. Weaker pupils are then not hopelessly out of their depth. Better pupils do not have to be bored. Naturally, all children want to be one of the better pupils, or at least be selected as one of them. But this would not only be unjust, but would also make no sense. In order that the selection can be made suitably and in accordance with the capabilities of the child, the class teacher does not only look at the marks of the learning tests. She must also evaluate whether the child will be able to cope with the demands of the next three years. If a child is practicing especially for the transition and in so doing is already finding itself at the limit, then it is less likely that it will be able to maintain the effort for the following three years. It would probably fall behind in about a half or whole year. School career decisions are in the school today much more frequent than they were 20 to 30 years ago. At that time, there was the one decision whether it was primary or secondary school. Today, decisions of this kind are taken at secondary school level one at the end of each semester. In the fifth and sixth classes, the behavior and performance of the child is particularly observed. Based on these observations, the class teacher establishes in the middle of the sixth school year the level at which the pupil should be taught in the secondary school level one. 
then it is not only the subject skills which count, that is, how well the child masters a subject, but also his work performance. As parents, you can observe the child yourselves and also estimate which challenges are right for your child. You should consider, does your child learn readily? Can it concentrate well? Does it have a certain staying ability and can it work on something for a longer time? Does your child quickly grasp the object of a task? Does your child consider carefully when starting a task? Does your child also attempt to solve more difficult problems? Does your child work well independently? Does your child work carefully? Is homework done even if you don't say anything? If these conditions are fulfilled, then you can be assured that your child is ready and suited for secondary school. And you really should do this. Your opinion is just as important for the transition as that of the child and the class teacher. By the end of January in the sixth school year, you will receive a transition report and a transition statement for your comments. This contains the assignment recommendations of the teacher, your evaluation and also that of the child. Then the transition discussion takes place. This is attended by the class teacher, the parents and the pupil. The aim of the discussion is to formulate together the assignment application. In most cases, all parties are in agreement after this discussion. If it is not possible to reach an agreement together, the child can take a control examination. This voluntary exam is the same throughout the whole canton. The test result provides the decision for the assignment if the teacher and the parents are unable to agree. At school, the computer is simply a tool for learning, just like the earlier calculator or a pencil. Also at home, the computer can be used for learning, whether it is for mathematical exercises or in order to find out something about a theme. Of course, the internet is not far away and therefore there are also some dangers. It is important that children look at the internet with a critical eye. They must learn which content is for them, what is helpful. The school also shows children how they should behave on the internet. That is an important part of our concept. It is also the duty of the school from the first grade to the ninth. But also at home, dealing with the internet must be learnt. As parents, it is our job to do this together with our children. Even when the child perhaps operates the computer faster than we can, if you have the feeling that your child handles the internet faster than you do, it does not necessarily mean that it is being used correctly. Just because the child is able to use the mouse quickly and easily, it does not mean that the child has the necessary media competence. Media competence consists of three levels. 
The first is the hardware, for instance, operating the mouse. The second level is the software. Do I understand what I am downloading and installing? Where does the software come from? Am I buying it or do I download it for free? The third level is the actual information. How do I handle the information from the internet? How do I assess it? These three levels together make up media competence. Of course, this competence does not come from nowhere. As parents, we must make our contribution before the child sets out into the huge expanse of the Internet. It is important for the child to have a basic knowledge before it goes on the Internet. Before a child crosses the road alone, you teach it the most important facts first and don't just leave it on the street. With the Internet, it is exactly the same. You have to teach the most important things. Only when the facts are understood can you set up rules as to how the child must behave on the net. Then it is possible to come back to those rules if they are not kept auf die Regeln zurückkommen, denn wenn jetzt mal etwas nicht eingehalten worden ist. It is quite likely that your child would like to be part of a community platform. It is important to be informed about the age you have to be before taking part in a particular platform. If the child is old enough, you can help with registering and all the security measures and discuss with the child exactly what is needed. Naturally, the parent should also be on the list of friends. Auch als Eltern sagen, es ist absolut zumutbar, dass ich ein Teil bin von dieser Freundesliste bin. If the child is not yet old enough to legally participate, it is important to check from where the pressure to take part is coming from. Warum muss man unbedingt auf die Community Plattform? Oder ist es irgendwie ein Druck, wo in der Schule aufgesetzt wird, also von Gespöndli und so weiter? Under the circumstances, the best solution would be to open a family account, which you can take care of together. Familien Account und bewirtschaftet der gemeinsam. Fundamentally, the Internet is a good thing. There is much content on the Internet which is well suited for children, for which they can benefit, also for the school. But these are areas also where caution is required.